a judge in McMinn County has made it official. A popular swimming hole will remain closed. Thousands of criminal complaints, two deaths, and now an arson investigation at the Blue Cove Hideaway. Will in McMinn County permanently close the state rule Blue Cove Hideaway a public nuisance. A public nuisance. That's how the world saw what I would say was probably the most beautiful place I've ever seen. But it was true. This place was trashed and poorly operated for years. This is how they saw the code before my team partners and volunteers took on the challenge. It's why the Blue Cove Hideaway has been a popular swimming hole for years. Owner Charlie Womack says he opened it as a family friendly place to go. It is a lot of work, but I like to see, especially young people, have a place that they can enjoy and not cost them much. Police arrested the owner of Blue, Co Blue Cove Hideaway in McMinn County twice this weekend after the court closed the gates. Thousands of people visit Blue Cove Hideaway every year. It was temporarily closed a few weeks ago, but now the state says it's a quote public nuisance and closed it for good. The state order to shut it down also says it's a business operating without a license with an organized campground that is serving food but has no permits. Womack tells me he's not running a business or selling food or campsites. Even though he also says people pay to get in, there are signs advertising the sale of food and he says he does charge people to stay overnight. I rent you the property for the day to swim and picnic in and then if you want to I'll rent it to you overnight for the, to swim and go picnicking. That's all. Is that not a campsite though? No. I think any rational person would term this to be a business, even though he's operating without a business license. Anything that I take in here is donations only. From there is where the cove went dark. It was a wasteland. Trucks, trash, abandoned trailers, the cove was at ground zero. This is how they saw it before we decided to take it on. We visited Blue Hole in June 2016 when police say a man died after jumping from this platform. At the time, they put up this sign warning guests to swim at their own risk. It was the second drowning there that year. Charles Womack does have a criminal history. Before this weekend, he had been arrested two other times in McMinn County. On Saturday, June 23rd, Sheriff Joe Guy says deputies were responding to a call about drug use at Blue Cove. When they got there, Guy says Womack locked the front gate and refused to let deputies leave. Womack says that's not exactly what happened. Josh, Kim, you can see here that it is still closed today with the police taking here and the sheriff's car here as well and a woman says while she was staying here she got into an argument with the owner that was back in May after that her RV mysteriously burned this weekend Womack was arrested twice once for allegedly defying the sheriff's order to shut down the swimming hole by encouraging people to ignore it we have evidence to believe that uh, the Womacks continue to uh, either through social media or through phone calls to invite people here to utilize the business my gate was long and they asked me would I unlock it. I said yes, if you'll tell me what you're doing here. And I went ahead and unlocked the gate. On Friday, deputies locked the gates at the swimming hole on a court's order. Then yesterday, even though these gates were closed, a group got inside. Deputies say a kid hurt his back when he jumped off a cliff. Womack was arrested again for reckless endangerment. He says he wasn't there and shouldn't be responsible for that. I didn't even know there was anyone there, period. The mission was to change the perspective of this place and put a small town on the map. Back when I was doing all my research, I remember Joe Guy saying, any reasonable person would turn this place into a legitimate business. At that point is when I realized it was game on and it was possible. 
But now let me take you guys back to how I got involved. I got word from some friends that the Cove was back open again. Around this time, COVID was going on, and I think we were just starting to have a little bit of freedom, and it was game on. I mean, my friends packed up the cars and we were on the way. When I got there, I saw the place was completely trashed. Um, it was nothing like what I remember seeing, and I asked Charles um, what happened. And he informed me that he had no help and he was getting old. And I said, okay, give me two weeks. I spent the next two weeks getting together some of my DJs, artists, and people that um, helped me build events, come out and throw basically um, a hurrah there open again kind of ordeal for him. I told him to keep all the funds for it and I wanted nothing for it. I just wanted to show him what was possible. The event was a complete success. After this event, Charles talked to me and he said, let's go all the way. Why don't you run the code? You can operate, you can have it. And I was like, um, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so um, I ended up talking to Travis Sims and the, and the Cliff Crews, and they were talking about coming out, and we were saying, let's make a big event about this, because this place means a lot to the world. So our goal was to build something called the Great Hideaway Cleanup, and it was going to be amazing. So while preparing for this event, I got contacted by the McMinn County Sheriff's Office, informing me that there's still a court order to permanently, that the cove is permanently closed. So I asked them and said, what do I got to do to get it open? And they basically informed me that there was nothing that I could do uh, while Charles is involved with the business. So from there, it was back to the planning board. I was spending nights and months working on a business plan, um, um, uh, trying out different, different scenarios to see what it was, to see how it was possible to make this real. After a few months of work, um, talked to a couple lawyers, and we made it happen. We um, had something to present to the state, and we did. After that, we went through the court system. Um, we went inside. They gave us approval to operate the cove, and from there, it was Operation RPCH. So that about wraps up this video, but in the next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about Operation RBCH, and we'll start to dive into um, more of the details before we get into full-on operation. So now, um, if you guys are wondering what happened to my arm, um, my dog actually ran out the door this morning, and I slipped on some ice, and I took one of those like TikTok video falls, like something you'll see that was super epic. It was like... Slip, catch myself, take four stumbles, dive into my shoulder. <laughs> so um, that's that, but I uh, shattered a couple things in there, but I'm going to be all right. So I'm thankful, and thank you for watching, and I got a lot more to share, so let's go.